If Canada has a heartbeat, that heartbeat is the Canadian farm. For over 150 years, Canadian farmers have faced the toughest conditions head-on, with one goal in mind, to get food to your table. Well, obviously, uh, the farm is uh, kind of a celebration of the hard work of our family. So uh, as many farms are, they're kind of a staple of family unity, family work. This farm has been in our family for about four generations, since the 1800s. So we've focused on orchard and asparagus. So we grow apples, tart cherries, and some pears. I enjoy being part of a business that impacts so many different families and, uh, and really helps improve the quality of life for people. My, my parents and I, well, we purchased the farm in 1990, but uh, personally been doing it for almost about 20 years on my own. It sure is fun getting up in the morning and, uh, and uh, having something that's actually contributing. Horticulture is a quarter of agriculture in Canada. And it's what you actually go to the grocery store and pick that apple, pick that cherry. Healthy eating is a hot topic these days, so it just seems like we're involved in an industry that's really in the, the hip and the now. We have a microclimate in Canada that we can grow almost all the different types of fruit and vegetables that we need. It's hard work, tilling and planting and pruning and harvesting, working the land and gambling that the weather gods will be kind. Efficiency is absolutely critical. Attention to detail is absolutely critical. And to try and hire enough local people, we know isn't possible. There's a huge labor gap, especially in horticulture across the country. Most people don't understand agriculture as a whole. I don't think they understand how much work goes into production. Uh, a lot of it's physical labor, so it is a lot of us picking, uh, packaging, like we package all of our cucumbers by hand. The days are possibly gone of lots of people realizing the benefits of working outside, getting some fresh air, using their muscles. The reality is that a lot of, lots of local people, they don't want to work in the farm because uh, everybody looking for other jobs, inside, indoor jobs, right? En sachant que le, le bassin d'emploi ici au Québec, Canada, on n'a pas de gens, euh, c'est plate à dire, compétents pour faire la, la, la tâche, des gens qui, qui sont prêts à travailler de très, très longues heures dans des conditions chaudes euh, pour faire un ouvrage qui est essentiel pour la production de, agricole. Yeah. We used to hire a lot of local teenagers. Um, they simply weren't interested in working the long hours outside in the sun. Um, they wanted, you know, short three-hour days and just three days a week, and then they were on vacation for the three weeks that strawberries were ready. Um, so it just was really hard to schedule and manage all of that. For the last half century or so, a group of people from places like Guatemala, Mexico, Trinidad and Jamaica, people like Shervin, Nalini, Babu and Joe, have come to Canada every year, stood beside our farmers and greenhouse operators, and made it possible for this extraordinary work to take place. And we've opened our hearts to them. That's just how it is in Canada. I, if I didn't have access to, um, to labor from the Seasonal Agriculture Worker Program, I, I don't think I would be farming. Um, you know, my last year of farming without bringing in my, my employees from Mexico, oh, man, I just, I was ready to give up. Um, you know, just for my Golden Delicious, I went through 16 different people. You know, some people would say, oh, we'll be there tomorrow, they wouldn't show up. Other people would show up, but they would just be, you know, dropping the apples like crazy, turning them into juice. So the temporary foreign worker programs are essential in filling that gap, but also because you have the opportunity to get, offer a person a contract the next year and they have the opportunity of whether or not they want to work for you again the next year, you have that opportunity to have consistency of training so you're not training a whole group of people every year. It's the way the world functions. Uh, we have to compete in this country against a lot of offshore products that are 
manufactured, grown, whatever, in economies where the standard of living is nowhere near what we dream of and live in Canada. If I did not have international farm workers, I would not be here. It's that bad. Reliable labor, period. We're the Canadian Horticultural Council, and we want you to meet the workers who make our farms and greenhouses thrive, and the Canadian farmers who are their hosts. So, we're going to share some of those stories with you so you can find out what's going on down on the farm. Pues allá, ahorita están 180 todo el día, 200, cuando mucho. Uh -huh. I'm asking him what's the payment back in Mexico. He says maximum 200 pesos a day, which is the equivalent to 12, 13 dollars for a whole day. I started this program from um, 1988, and um, it take care of my family, my children to school. When I started it, I, I didn't know that I would be on it so long, but I started at a young age, and I, I grew on it. That's, I have that love for this, this program. Uh, it wasn't very complicated. We would apply for workers in the past, and it happened to be all men. Then uh, one year we get a phone call from the Trinidad office, going, uh, you know, we'd, we'd like to know if, if you wouldn't mind having women on your farm. And we looked around, go, yeah, like, why, what do you mean, would, would we mind? I love the farm, right? This is my first experience being on a farm, and it, for me, it is very nice being here. I got the opportunity to help my family, so it is really, really nice for me. When I started in 2009, they were taking women, so, and before they were saying they would only was taking men on this farm, but then he decided to take women, which I was glad to come here. And I've learned to do different things, things that I never thought that I could do, but I think at this farm you get a lot of opportunities, and it's up to you to take it and try new things. This is uh, like people back home, we would say this is our bread and butter. When we say our bread and butter, this is what we do to gain money. So if it's ever taken away from us, we, we don't know where we'll fall, we don't know where we stand. So I think this is a very good opportunity for us and having us come to Canada every year, it, it does a lot for, for us Trinidadians. And it's not all about working because I did some courses too, like um, first aid to be on the field out here in case of somebody getting injured, I can assist, I got a certificate in it. And I learned to drive the bus. I also am um, trained to drive forklift. I think I have to prove myself to myself first. Yeah, that I could do it. And then my employers would see that I could do it. Working here, working in Jamaica, the difference is like the money. That is a huge difference, right? So when you have one dollar a year, you have $97 back home in Jamaica. So when you have a thousand dollar here, it's 97,000 back home. So that make a big difference, right? Like that is like, it's like when people from Nova Scotia go to Alberta, like they just, they leave here, go to Alberta and make big money. Same with the guys from Jamaica. So it's like this awesome opportunity to make a bunch of money. It, it, it's a better standard of living overall. Acabé mi casa, hice una sala con mármol, forré mi baño de mármol. Este, compré una sala, un refrigerador y este, pues le hice sus sueños a mi hija, ¿no? Unos 15, ah, claro. unos 15 años que ella tanto quería y gracias a Dios, pues, y a esto trabajo de Canadá, pues, le hice su sueño a mi hija. Thanks to this job to, here in Canada, he uh, finished his house and he gave his daughter her dream, which was to have his big party of 15 years old, that's like a, a dream for every 15-year-old girl. And many fathers start saving for that since they are babies, since the daughters are babies. Well, and our, our team here, his name is, is Bobby. 
And um, his wife had called him earlier that week saying that uh, the textbook bill had come in and it was quite extravagant. It was going to be like 40,000 Jamaican dollars. She texted me at for the, the, the cost for the, the book list. Yeah, and it's, it's way more than I, I, I have expected. Big bill. But uh, he was so thankful to say that he told her to go ahead and write the check and pay the bill because he has a job here in Canada that he could support his family back in Jamaica so they could do their yeah, post-secondary education and carry on. The program here just make it simple. Yeah, yeah. I just thank, for the, thank God for this program that I could be able to pay his school fee off, pay his book list off and have everything under control. Yeah. Yeah. C'est leur ouvrage qui, qui vivent au Guatemala. On, on a des, des ouvriers guatémaltèques ici. Euh, ils sont des, des producteurs agricoles au Guatemala. Ils savent qu'est-ce que ça prend, qu'est-ce que c'est, puis ils ont, ils ont une passion pour la production aussi. This is agriculture. Food production doesn't pay, doesn't have the margins enough to pay a lot of money. But for Mexican workers, I know that the impact of this money is a lot. It's, it's big for, for their lives. Their kids go to good schools. Their kids will have opportunities. They will have small businesses. They will have better lives. And I can testify that every two weeks when they, they get, get paid, they go to send the money. And that goes to the wife, that goes to build the house, that goes to the expenses or maybe to have uh, some chicken, some pigs, whatever they need to do there with the help of their families in Mexico. Bueno, la verdad nosotros venimos a trabajar aquí por la misma necesidad que en Guatemala no es posible para poder alimentar a un a un hijo, donarle una educación, donarle un posible un vestimenta, alimentos, es muy difícil. La oportunidad que tenemos aquí en Canadá es muy grande. Ahora los Los pequeños bebés son mucho más alegres, ellos feliz con un pequeño regalo, eh, una casa mucho mejor. Eh, ellos, de verdad, es aunque un poco triste cuando uno partir, pero realmente al regresar ellos se sienten mucho más feliz porque sí se sabe que realmente el, la necesidad que viene a cubrir uno aquí sí vale la pena. Few Canadians are aware of the fact that there is a career path for international farm workers. Just like in any other industry, hard workers who demonstrate skills, initiative and leadership move from pickers to team leaders to supervisors. Many have brought their families here and settled. Some have even bought existing properties here in order to start a new life as Canadian farmers. Um, I started the program in 2009. I started out in the greenhouse as we all came here to do. I remember the greenhouse supervisor, he, he said to me, you know what, Sherv, I'm not going to send you to work in the warehouse ever because if I sent you to the warehouse, they are not going to send you back over here. So he made the awesome mistake of sending me to the warehouse and the rest is history. Um, I started out as a, as a packer there and I gradually gradually uh, climb up the chain. Now I'm the warehouse manager. Shervin is here. He's here alongside with his wife, Monique, who goes to school here. And he really has embraced our culture in itself. And, and Shervin, this is where he'll start a family. My workers are, are totally invested in my business and uh, we have an understanding that you know I have to be successful and if, if I'm successful they'll be they'll have more work we can uh, we'll, we'll expand we'll, we'll be leasing more orchards or buying more orchards we can bring more workers so it helps everybody. The program is very regimented by the government in terms of what we have to do and how we have to do and what we have to report and we have all kinds of regulations built around worker safety and employment standards and so on. It's reviewed every year by both the employers and the employees so it is it is collective bargaining on issues of, 
um, what's uh, provided to workers at the workplace and how workers are treated. So a lot of thought and energy has got into that from the Canadian government, from the foreign governments and from the employers. So it's really the onus is on the employer to respect that and to cooperate with the rules and, and everything will go good for you. Right now I have around, I think, oh, about 60, 60 uh, worker from the program. And every year that uh, it's growth, every year we get more and more. So what we get from Jamaica is are some really great, I, I call them highly skilled farm workers. They are professional farmers. There's a lot of goodwill from people in the community who understand the value of this program to the community. And local business leaders definitely know what the economic impact is of this, because for every $10 that I spend on a worker's wage, it has a ripple of effect of about $30 in the local economy. And there have been studies on that to, to verify that. The, the economic spin-off that Leamington enjoys from the migrant workers being here is substantial. Our guesstimate is more along the $18 million a year in economic input into this community just from their shopping habits that they have. So when you, you look at the greenhouse industry as a whole, even our field farmers, uh, where these migrant workers are working, it's, it's more than just the greenhouse industry. It's all the spin-off industry that's really hard to put your fingers on, but it's, it's in the millions. So it's, it's been very good for our municipality. The spin-off to employment, whether it's the trucking companies, the packaging firms, a greenhouse operation employs so many people outside of the temporary foreign workers that it's it's huge in this in this community for sure. Yeah, we have guys that uh, that uh, have come to us since uh, since we started um, now since 2010 um, every year, and uh, a lot of times at the end of the day you go out and and you talk to them, and then uh, five years ago we started uh, the baseball league in uh, Leamington, and. Uh, I did it just because I want to get to know them a little bit more just than, than, than always me as an employer and them as an employee. And that's why, uh, you know, we went out on a Sunday afternoon and they had nothing to do and we got a couple teams together and started playing baseball, so. that the migrant workers get to know the local people, the no local people more are the migrant workers, and then just, just Sunday afternoon have some fun. And it got pretty serious. We got, we got five teams now that we're, uh, that we're playing every Sunday afternoon, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun, and that's how we can share a lot of things, and they, they, they talk more of their you know, personal things and, uh, that they do in Mexico and what they have done in Mexico. And because uh, when we started, I told them, I said, we're all friends. communicate via Wi-Fi pretty much every day. And, you know, I, I talk to my wife every day and, and that's, you know, with the telephone. My daughter, my grandson, we, I video chat my grandson three or four times a week. We have Wi-Fi, we can talk back, back to him. We have Wi-Fi in the bunk and can see my family, see my little kids running up and down and say, Daddy, Daddy, when you, when you coming back? And say, Daddy, remember you bring that thing for me, you know? que haya una comunicación constante, ¿no? Tanto con la mujer, con los hijos. Por la cosita más mínima que sea, hazle sentir que, que, que tú estás ahí, que tú estás ahí para ellos, ¿no? Tanto para la mujer como para, para tu hijo. Cualquier duda que tengan, te la puedan preguntar, sientan la confianza. No porque está, estamos a miles de kilómetros, ¿no? Nous ici, de, depuis l'année 2000, on, présentement, on a une trentaine de travailleurs étrangers qui sont mexicains. On a eu un travailleur qui se nomme Valentine, que dans le fond, on a des... Tranquillement, il est arrivé au début des années 2000 avec nous autres. Puis tranquillement, il s'est démarqué à travers l'équipe. C'était quelqu'un qui avait un certain leadership. J'ai pris la décision de venir ici avec ma famille. Premièrement, parce que j'étais venu ici et à peu près 9 ans, puis 
six mois ici, six mois au Mexique, ça c'est plate parce que on est ici toute seule, puis euh, toute seule et on n'a pas femme, on n'a pas des enfants, on n'a pas famille ici. Puis Valentine, je pense que ici qui est apprécié, il est aimé, je pense qu'il aime vraiment son emploi ici. Il est content de, de la réalité puis de, de la fierté de qu ce qu'il fait au niveau de son travail ici. Ce n'était pas, pas un choix pour lui de rapetisser le contrat. Puis il nous en parlait, il avait l'arme aux yeux, puis il ne savait plus quoi, quoi choisir. Puis à un moment donné, il nous est arrivé puis il nous a dit si c'est ma femme puis mes enfants qui s'en viennent ici, ça serait-tu correct? C'est une panoplie de, de gens qui amènent des cultures différentes, que ce soit africaine, que ce soit colombienne, mexicaine. Euh, c'est ouvert à la mondialisation, aux saveurs aussi, hein, de connaître. Puis je pense que ça peut juste apporter une ouverture vers le monde. Puis Valentine a été un de ceux-là. Oui, oui, c'est un grand changement. À part de que c'est très bonito, le travail est pues, bien. À part du frío, pues, ici à Et pues, c'est tout bien. Sí, es una, es un gran cambio, pero es para, para bien, para un mejor futuro. Para los niños, sí, mejor futuro para ellos. También. También. So some of the things that we've done um, to support our employees uh, have been uh, yoga programs. The last few years, I've had uh, some of my teachers, Gina Wasserlein and Misha Swan from Moksha, come and teach basic yoga for the employees to basically as uh, a way to cope with strenuous work, repetitive work, to take tools from these classes to be able to do this on their own. If they say, you know, my wrists are sore today, like I've got some wrist stretches that, that I can take home and I can do this on my own. <laughs> Yeah! You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. Hold on. And so we've we've had these classes accessible and I you know rotate through employees to make sure they all get an opportunity to do them and learn what they can from it and, and go from there. Yeah, that's good. Bend your knees. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. I mean another thing that we do uh, we have been running a school here on the farm, uh, teaching the guys how to, uh, getting them, uh, bringing the, the literacy up on our, for the guys. And so, um, and I help with that by texting. Before I couldn't send a text to anybody. And now, you know, I slowly are, are we're getting into texting and, and helping them, um, you know, like some of them have very little schooling, so math, and so we, we all sat down and said, you know, what do you want to learn? Uh, math and, and, and writing. We've increased that. This is year three now. We saw one uh, former uh, worker whose son was from St. Lucia. He was able to put his son through to become a doctor. Well, that son ran for politics and got elected. And he went to the incoming prime minister and says, I want to be the Minister of Labour because I want to be responsible for the foreign worker program. He saw the benefit because he saw the benefit in his own family. International farm workers pay taxes, pay into the Canada Pension Plan and employment insurance programs. They also buy groceries, gifts and supplies to send home, partake in social activities, eat in restaurants. In communities where there is a large concentration of international farm workers, their impact is quite significant. Canada is known far and wide for the generous way in which we contribute to foreign aid, sending billions of dollars each year to nations around the world. The International Farm Worker Program can be viewed as direct foreign aid. It's the best program, foreign aid program that Canada has because number one, it doesn't cost the government a dime. Number two, that money is going directly into the hands of farm, of farm worker communities. Minimal cost, no cost to government, and that most direct benefit to the end, end user. So I, and I think, that's really, I think that's really misunderstood. Every time I make a paycheck here, I know that because of the number of people those workers are supporting, I'm supporting eight and a half people back in Jamaica. Well, when you leave Jamaica and come here on this farm to work, it's more better, it's more better for you. It's more better for us. 
in Canada for because you earn money to take care of your family. He's got uh, 11 children back home. Uh, he has three sets of twins. Uh, his wife had developed brain cancer when the last set of twins were two years old and she died. Uh, he lost his house. Uh, the arrangement he had, he didn't have anything on paper to say that that was his and so he lost where he was living and he's starting all over again. Working in Canada helped me to get this this hole to fix up the real hole. I wanted to. Yeah. After Kevin has lost everything in his previous marriage of 15 years, it wouldn't be so fast for him if it if he wasn't working at Morris Farm to start all over again within a space of few few years or so. Yes, he has accomplished this piece of land and house and if it wasn't for a Morris farm, it couldn't have happened because working in Jamaica, it's hard. Kevin has a boy who's five years old who's got sickle cell anemia. He said that it costs him $500 a month for the medication to keep that boy alive. He said, without this program boss, he said, my boy dies. That's what it means to Kevin Thomas. I mean, I like the program for continue that we can have a better life for my wife and my kids them. So because the program help us a lot, you know, help us, help us a lot, you know. Yeah. And trust me, it's like eight thousand dollars for a blood test. Yes, and we have to go into Kingston to get the medical done. Now we ask for it to done down here now. Yeah, and the next thing now they're gonna close down the clinic in August. So we're gonna even have it rougher. But thank God for Murray's work. Yes, that employer, Mr. Murray Porches, God bless him. Kevin Thomas wants the minister to know that this program's important to him, to his family, and to his son. He's been buying land and planting coffee and keeping livestock so that he can support himself when he's done working in the program. But for the 12 or so years that, that uh, he's worked here, He's done a great job. He's a great guy to work with. We really appreciate him. And we know we're making a big difference back home in his family. Mr. Murray, I don't know you, but I love you so much. I said, Kevin, you have the best boss. And Kevin, come and tell me anything about him. He said, yes, thumbs up to Mr. Murray. I love you, Mr. Murray, yeah. Thank you for helping my husband so that he can take care of his family. He's a good dad. He's a cut above the rest. I love you too, Kevin. <laughs> it's a different culture than it is in Canada. Here you try and get ahead. Everybody's trying to get ahead. Whereas in a developing country, if somebody has to come from their family to work in Canada, then a brother-in-law maybe is, is tending their crops or a sister's looking after their livestock. Those people are all part of the process. So when those people send money back home that are working here, they're sending it to their community. And the community comes ahead, not the individual. So it's a different cultural mentality. Ces gens-là sont de la famille pour nous. Pour nous, ils travaillent à côté de nous, ils ont les mêmes valeurs que nous. Puis à la fin de la journée, c'est vraiment le fun d'avoir un ami comme ça. Ils deviennent absolument des amis. J'ai un énorme respect pour ces gens-là. C'est une inspiration pour moi de, de voir ce qui est accompli ici à la ferme et à la maison pour eux. Uh, José est arrivé il y a six ans maintenant. On lui a, on lui a donné des outils pour se, se valoriser un peu mieux. On lui a donné des outils uh, pour ramener au Guatemala et puis uh, remonter sa famille un petit peu. Uh, il donnait près de la moitié de son salaire à l'église. Et puis il a vite réalisé que donner la moitié de son salaire à l'église fournissait absolument aucun bénéfice à sa famille. Au lieu de donner la moitié de son salaire à l'église, il a construit une école. La première école secondaire dans son comté. Sa fille, c'est la première personne dans son comté à aller à l'école secondaire que lui a construit.
these people are better than I am. They, they have struggled in where they come from. They have not got the, the, uh, 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 the better things of life and they have left their families, which is huge sacrifice to come here and help our industry in Canada. These people are, are treated well. They want to be here and they help our economy thrive and, and move into the future. Uh, on a personal level, um, I mean, I'm a person, I'm a people person. Josh coming like, he don't come like a boss, he come like a brother with us, right? Because even when Josh come to Jamaica, he don't go to a hotel, he come to our house. So who don't have a vehicle, he take care of us. Josh, we just respect Josh. These, these guys, you know, they've been, we've been working together for 14 years and now I've, tra I've traveled down there this, this year, hopefully I go, will be year number five. So, like every time I go to their, I go to everyone's house, you know, I know their neighbors, I know their brothers, I know their cousins, I know their, you know, so I, I'm invested quite heavily in their personal lives and um, so they mean a lot to me. This is a uh, human, like, we're all humans, right? first of all. We gotta, we gotta take care of each other, you know. Doesn't matter how much money you have, it's not a go with you. Well, one of the best things for me, like every year I come here, I learn something more, right? And it coming here on the farm, I like me to a lot of stuff that I want to dream of. Since I come here, I learn a lot. We argue about who who is benefiting the most out of the relationship, and. Um, uh, so, yeah, they mean a lot to me personally, for sure, because they're friends and uh, I mean, they're, they're like, they're family. This program is, is a life changer for a lot of people, not just in the Caribbean. I know if I, I can say if you were talking to a Mexican, they could say the same thing also. There's so much opportunity for these guys to make something of themselves. They can, they can do things that they wouldn't normally be able to do for their families. We are grateful for the opportunity. When you come into a country as a stranger and are treated the way that we are treated, you know, you, you, you honestly don't have a lot to there's no negatives in other words, so there's not a lot to, to add or to take away from that other than to say thanks for having us here and for giving us the opportunity, you know, to do the things that we've done. At the end of the day, as the farm winds down and the greenhouses close for the night, the stories are expressed over and over by both worker and host about growing friendships, about real loyalty, about family and future, about the heartbeat that grows stronger every day down on the farm.